Hey everyone, welcome back to the MPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you. This is related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary system as we go through the FSBPT's content outline. So as you recall, on test day, you can expect somewhere between 22 and 27 questions related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary system. And if I haven't mentioned it in a while, just a, a quick review of the types of questions you'll see on test day. So the the largest variety of questions you'll see on test day, test day will be a text-based question. Now there will also be image-based questions as well as video-based questions. In addition to the new scenario-based questions, they're, they're text-based questions as well. So in, all told, you'll get this variety of questions, but all of them, will follow the same format that we go through in this in this podcast where there will be four distinct answer choices. You'll choose the very best one and then you are graded based on on those choices. So there there are not any questions where it's some of the above or all of the above or none of the above. Rather, they are distinct answer choices and your job is to pick the one that is the most correct. So today I've got a practice question for you related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary system. But just a quick reminder, if you haven't yet and you want to, be sure to sign up for the VIP class. We're starting that up. We're in the musculoskeletal system this week as we go through each of the sections on the exam. The goal being that we go through a, a video library of the content around the MSK system. Additionally, we have live sessions going through practice questions, much like what we're doing here. So we've got the practice questions as well as the video content. Plus, we have a private Telegram group. It's a place where we can get questions answered, asked. You can reach out to other members of the group. And then additionally, you can schedule one-on-one -on -one calls with me. Uh, we've got six practice exams you can go through as you wish. We have written material, including a study guide and a workbook. It's a great way to go through the content related to each of the systems each week. So like this week, the big goal would be to go through the, cardio, the, <laughs> go through the musculoskeletal system as a part of the VIP class. And then also, uh, we go through all of the big three systems one more time as we get closer and closer to test day. So you want to not miss out on that. We're just starting that up. So if you want to take part in that, be sure to grab that as quickly as you can. Uh, access for that is one year. So if you are testing any time in 2025, really it behooves you to sign up sooner rather than later so you have access to all the content, be able to grab all that great content as you go through that last year of PT school on your way towards the NPTE. All right, let's do it. Let's talk through our practice question here today. So as per usual, I will read through the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. Which of the following effects is the most likely benefit to a forward-leaning tripod position in patients with COPD? So which of the following effects is the most likely benefit to a forward-leaning tripod position in patients with COPD? One, decreased intra-abdominal pressure. Two, decreased rib cage mobility, three, increased diaphragm flattening, or four, increased accessory muscle recruitment. So we've got one, decreased intra-abdominal pressure, two, decreased rib cage mobility, three, increased diaphragm flattening, and four, increased accessory muscle recruitment. So again, the question is asking, which of the following effects is the most likely benefit to a forward-leaning tripod position in, in patients with COPD? So the, the crux of this question is really just whether or not you understand the tripod position in the first place. So the forward-leaning tripod position, this is a classic position taken by patients with COPD, and it has several effects, not the least of which is that it increases intra-abdominal pressure. So it pushes the, the diaphragm up into the thorax, up into the thorax so that you can get a better, as you contract the diaphragm, it can descend a little bit better. So it pushes it up passively and then you can have it descend a little bit more easily with gravity assist. So all that is in relation to the diaphragm. This question, the correct answer here is asking or mentioning that increased accessory muscle recruitment, this is, this is, is done or achieved by having the upper extremities fixed on either a table or on the patient's own legs. So some, somehow they have fixed their upper extremities. By so doing, they can better use the pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, and sternocleidomastoid to lift their, their dire, not the diaphragm, lift the, the rib cage into inhalation. So you get better accessory muscle support when you fix the, the extremities, you fix the extremities so that when they contract, especially the pectoralis major, when they contract, they pull on 
the thoracic or the origin of the muscle. They pull on that. So essentially you've reversed the origin and insertion of the pecs. And so as you fix the upper extremities and you contract the pectoralis major and minor, what happens is that helps to open up and expand the chest cavity so you can get a better and deeper breath. So that tripod position is best for getting the accessory muscle support. And again, this is because you fixed the distal attachment. So you have, a, you have fixed the upper extremities so that when you contract the pectoralis major, it pulls open the rib cage. And additionally, you get that increased intra-abdominal pressure, which pushes the diaphragm up into a better position to start. And then once you contract, you have gravity assisting it as it contracts and descends into a flat position. So you don't want to increase diaphragm flattening, rather you, you create that concavity of the diaphragm by using the viscera to help push it up into kind of its, its original position or to its resting position. And then as you take a deep breath, it contracts and flattens. And again, you're getting gravity assisting there. So bottom line here is the best benefit is that increased accessory muscle recruitment in the tripod position. This increases intra-abdominal pressure so that you have the diaphragm a little bit higher up in the thorax at the beginning of respiration. And then uh, you have the, uh, the diaphragm contracting into a, it does come down into a flat position, but you get that better, the better expansion of lungs as the diaphragm moves from the concave position to a flat position. Now, what's interesting here is that rib cage mobility is an issue in patients with COPD. They tend to have decreased rib cage mobility, uh, but that would not be the effect of the tripod position. Rather, that's just they have that hyperinflation. They don't have enough. Uh, it's really kind of related to the posture. It's a catch-22 with the forward-leaning tripod position. You can get postural deficits, so a lot of postural problems, by being in that forward-leaning posture all the time. So it's not like it's a magic fix. However, it does help to get a better a better breath, especially in patients that are struggling for breath. So again, this question was about which of the following effects is the most likely benefit to a forward-leaning tripod position in patients with COPD. And the correct answer is that increased accessory muscle recruitment, specifically pectoralis major, uh, as well as pectoralis minor. And I think even sternocleidomastoid is mentioned as well in the textbook. But the point is that if you fix the distal attachments, then the proximal attachments so the origins of those muscles can help pull the chest wall open so the patient can get a better breath. All right, so there you go. There's your practice question for today. As we come to a conclusion here, just a quick reminder, we've got some of our best Black Friday deals coming up. So if you haven't yet, be sure to sign up over at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast to get the very best deals. You'll be the first on the list. Plus, we've got some fun uh, fun things coming out. I think you'll really like some of our, we've, we've kind of gamified the the NPT prep experience. So you'll want to watch for that. If you want to get the best deals and be first on the list there, go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, put in your email so we can send you those best deals the quickest so you can get, get the very best of our Black Friday deals. So, all right, we'll bring it to a conclusion. Thanks everyone. Really appreciate you. If you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a like, uh, subscribe to us, check us out over on YouTube where we've got the full video podcast as well. I'll catch you on the next one. Have a fabulous day, everyone. Talk to you soon.